Hello, and welcome back to another episode. Now today, I want to share with you something that I'm rather proud of. Something that I made on Thursday, and actually made on Thursday. It was a really rather fast making turnaround on this item. I started first thing in the morning, finished by the end of the day, and I was actually quite surprised at how well it turned out. And, and I figured you guys might be interested as well. You see, it had to be ready in time for Saturday. Saturday was a mammoth D&D session for our particular D&D troupe. Um, our group were meeting uh, following a, a session previously which had split the, the party apart above and below ground in this, this epic sprawling campaign where there was also a, a particular mission for our thief that tied in with the broader meta story. It was coming to like a, the end of a chapter and there was this great big sort of confrontation in the town square where all but one of us escaped the uh, the troops. One of us is going to be in, in prison next time we meet. It's sort of like an epic mid-season finale type thing in our D&D campaign. It was very exciting and it was basically a nine or ten hour session that we had on Saturday. It was magnificent. Uh, but also on Saturday we were celebrating someone's birthday a member of our group uh, who actually was our original DM when we first started out she was our dungeon master um, Anna um, she had celebrated her birthday last week and we were celebrating it with her on Saturday and we wanted it to be special because she's actually going back to Canada in the next couple of months and we wanted to, you know, to, to get, give her something to get something that, that showed our appreciation for her for her dungeon master efforts but also hopefully we're going to be able to continue d and via Skype when she's back home. So a special present was in order. And we figured we would get her something that was uh, character orientated, that was connected to her character and also to our campaign together. You may recall a little while ago, I made a series of gelatinous cubes for our current dungeon master because he was really proud of this particular monster and also we loved the the the, uh, the way he described this this scenario in our campaign so that that is that sort of present that we wanted to make for anna now anna has always played a very particular role in our group she is the tank she's a, a paladin of torm a hulking mountain of a woman uh, but you know quite attractive red hair pale skin uh, covered in armor and and just ready for a fight and she has a go-to weapon, and her weapon of choice is a flail. Uh, kind of like a mace, I guess, with a chain between the handle and the spiky metal bit. But this flail is very special. She can do a divine smite with it. She can smack undead and evildoers with like a god-like force. But also, she has two hits. So this flail isn't just one of these, it's two of these heads on a, on, a, on a stick that she can flail about. And it's become a real staple for her character. It's, it's her go-to attack. It's also become a bit, a bit of an in-joke in our group. We like to imagine that she's sort of flailing around like one of those, um, uh, you know, the tube guys you see outside used car dealerships in America, this kind of thing. Uh, so, so the flail was was the item. We, as a group, we decided we wanted to do something flail related for Anna. Uh, and so I started to Google flail and we wanted it to be, if it was going to be a flail, to be safe. So LARP safe, i.e. not a real metal hulking dangerous thing, uh, but also in that sense light as well. If she's flying back to Canada in the near future, well, what's the point of giving her a, a great big hulking piece of steel anyway? So. Those were the criteria, and there were a couple of things out there that kind of met that. There was one one flail in particular that that, that was suitable. Um, it looked quite good, but it was only a single flail flail, so it didn't have the two chains and balls on it. Uh, but also, on Thursday morning, we were rapidly approaching Saturday, and no one had yet bought anything. And frankly, if we were to buy anything anyway online, it would have arrived late. So really, this was the option. I was going to make a flail. So I, I uh, started hunting around the house for things that I could use. And I've always kept, for emergency use, a, uh, a, a series of foam tiles, which are part of a sort of a, like a children's animal ABC kind of learning set that I got from a charity shop. But these are, are proper sort of one and a half centimetre, two centimetre thick 
EVA foam tiles, which I've always thought would come in handy for crafting. So I grabbed those. I grabbed a wooden dowel, uh, which, which I figured would come in handy for forming the head of the mace, uh, or of these flails. Well, I suppose the mace head of the flail. Um, and I set up shop outside on the patio. First of all, I had to draw out, I guess, a template piece with a biro, and uh, I took a couple of, of swings at it. I wanted quite a chunky uh, flail head, but I got my template and started to draw out and cut out with my trusty knife, piece after piece after piece, until I had a total of three, six, nine, twelve pieces uh, with which I was going to construct my flail heads. At this point, I realised I needed a decent glue, so I popped out to the local hobby craft store and came back with some Gorilla Glue. And Gorilla Glue is super strong, but also this one actually had a brush which I could use to, to apply the glue to the foam. That was important because I had to apply a, a goodly amount of glue to, to the long edge of the foam pieces that were going to be attaching to the wooden dowels. And I applied them in a, in a sort of 12 four and eight o'clock kind of position around the outside of the, the dowel. And uh, and when I was done, I was actually really quite pleased with the, with the effect that was coming uh, coming forth from the from from, from just, just the shape of this thing. It looked kind of brutal and cool, and I was really, really rather happy. Now, I, I made a total of four of these things because, well, anything can go wrong. <laughs> and I fully expected something to go wrong, but also, if nothing did go wrong, I was going to make an extra uh, flail for myself. So, so you know, everyone wins. If <laughs> something goes wrong, I've got backups. If nothing goes wrong, then I can have a flail for myself. So there was an incentive there to get everything right the first time. Uh, I also, when I was out and about, I pur purchased a, uh, a safety chain from a local hardware store uh, a red and white plastic chain that's used to to cordon off areas on a building site for example and uh, i cut this into sections uh, removing the red sections from the chain and keeping the white sections and those those white sections would become the chain for the flail so i had the chains i had the flail heads uh, all i needed to do now was to connect them so i got my drill my trusty trusty drill and uh, drilled through the bottom of the dowel. I deliberately kept a uh, sort of one or two centimeter section on the bottom of the dowel and uh, in order to, to, to connect these things somehow. I didn't really have a, a plan in mind when I started out but I knew something would something would come up, something would come to mind as I, as I had these materials in front of me and that's what I did. I dr drilled a hole through and then taking a single link of the red sections of chain uh, and these sections are uh, these links, these single links I'd already trimmed, as well. I'd already cut uh, in order to, to, to separate the white from the red. Well, I used the, these single cut links to become the, the link that was attached to the dowel. So that one single red link of chain on the dowel glued in place using the Gorilla Glue. And then, of course, from there, on each flail, the white chain was connected. I then took another look at the flail heads and realised that I wanted them to look quite uh, quite well grafted together. And also, frankly, it wouldn't hurt if I applied some hot glue uh, down the, the join between the dowel and the, uh, the foam on each, uh, each, each of the sides, each of the three aspects of the flail heads. So this, 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 this effect, this, this hot gluing, gave the flail heads uh, eventually a kind of look of almost of having been welded together and i didn't mind that that's quite brutal quite sort of you know quite um quite metal so uh, so yeah reinforcing the connection between the foam and the dowel using some hot glue uh worked on multiple levels in that sense uh next came the problem of painting these things and i had purchased some some chrome paint and uh, the chrome paint, I wasn't expecting to have a chrome finish, but I wanted the, 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 the colour on the chain and the foam to have a really high chance of looking, well, metallic or a little bit shiny. I didn't, didn't want a chrome finish and it, there wasn't going to be a chrome finish on foam, definitely not, and probably not on plastic. But I wanted to have a, a good 
opportunity, a good, a good running start at looking metallic. So high shine, high particulate pe pe paint was used to spray these things, which actually I, uh, I, I hung on a makeshift sort of washing line between two, two um, stands that I use for various reasons. So hung them out in the garden, sprayed them, and they, they started to really come together. You know when you, when you first spray something, uh, a, a nice solid color, and it starts to look like a thing as opposed to a collection of bits and bobs? That was very satisfying indeed. Next, I turned my attention to the handle for the flail. Now, this had to be just right. It had to have a certain weight, a presence, a color that made it look and feel and 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 handle, no pun intended, like a flail handle. I, I didn't want it to, to just be a dowel, you know, like a plain pine colored dowel that I purchased from a DIY store. And thankfully, in my, my shed where I keep all sorts of things, I have a drawer full of just random bits of, of machinery and chunks of metal and wiring and I have a corner that's got lots of dowels and bits of wood and, and just odds and sods all over the place. Thankfully in that collection of stuff I found the, the perfect dowel. It had been used in some furniture at some point, it had a dark wood varnished finish and was really easy actually to cut to length. So I just sort of held the piece of wood in my hand, I guesstimated roughly how long I wanted the handle to be and chopped it to that length. I mean, well, I chopped two pieces to that length. But the dowel uh, wasn't enough. I wanted a bit more to this handle. And so I went back into the shed and got my little box of offcuts of leather. And uh, together with the leather and some little black tacks, which were perfect for this job, and also a little bit of glue uh, uh, just to get things going, I attached and tightly wound a, uh, a spiraling leather uh, grip I suppose onto the handle in two directions so like a double helix uh, spiraling grip with a nice sort of leather lip on each end of the, of the handle and I was really pleased with it it was simple but elegant reminiscent of like a medieval-ish D&D kind of thing uh, but also just just elevated it from a piece of wood a dowel to a handle it was this was ready ready to be connected to the rest of the flail now that was something of a problem. I had a plan, and this plan involved two two hooks, two uh, fairly shiny metal hooks that, that would screw into the end of the dowel. And initially, what I did was I, I put the hook in, put the two uh, two flail chains onto that hook, and then just hammered that hook closed to become a, a closed loop connecting to uh, well, the two bits together the handle and the and the flailing flail bits but that didn't it just didn't work it, it didn't feel right it didn't look right and crucially when when you sort of flailed because these the two chains were on the same ring there was something about how they were interacting they were sort of getting in each other's way and it just it wasn't right uh, so I had to had to quickly rethink that uh, so I took out that hook turned the flail handle over so we had uh, an end without a hole in or a hole or holes in and I drilled four holes uh, into which I put two links of chain so what I did was I chopped another link of chain in half and put those two halves into those holes hopefully the picture makes it clear and I used those two protruding now links of chain to be two separate anchor points for the flails uh, this worked much much better and and the flail just felt wonderful it swung beautifully it had a it had a uh, an identity as it were in the swing that made sense especially if you if you swung the flail such that the two rings were sort of swinging in unison the flail arms came with them that was that was what i was after and and it just also just looked a bit more honest you know a bit more brutal a bit more D &D. So uh, I, I was really glad that I didn't just, just make do with that quick and dirty flail attaching mechanism. It, it worked, but it also wasn't right. So I'm really happy that I, that I rethought that whole thing. It just worked so much better uh, with the two attachments. But this did leave me with a hole on the other end of the flail handle where the original attachment had been, and that wasn't, that wasn't ideal. 
So I figured that I would go through with something that had been in the back of my mind, and that is adding a little jewel on the bottom of the handle. Uh, I have in my office a little treasure chest where I keep my spare change, some uh, prop gold doubloons from a pirate chest, and also various items of costume jewellery, which I pick up from pound shops, because, you know, a treasure chest has got to have gems and jewels in, as well as your spare change. And uh, and I picked the, the perfect little thing that went on the end of the handle and just finished it off as this, this, this item that felt suitably brutal, but also suitably treasured, because, as I say, Haven, but also Anna, uh, our, our friend loves this 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 weapon she loves the idea of the flail and so actually finishing it off as this treasured campaign uh, stalwart item that that haven the, the paladin would have taken on various adventures with her and and adorned with the handle and with the jewel just just felt right it finished the piece quite nicely and so by the end of the day the flail was more or less finished uh, the paint job was still a little bit tacky uh, the uh, the the uh, the paint and the the clear gloss sealant that I'd, put, I'd sprayed on it was a bit a bit sticky to touch so I did hang it up in the shed to dry overnight and also over the course of Friday uh, and and really by Saturday morning it was ready for the final touches and that was weathering the metal elements uh, so I, I did a quick wash of uh, flesh wash from my games workshop paint collection just to try and bring the metal um, I suppose metal into the real world make it look a little bit a little bit corroded a little bit sort of uh, a little bit like it could be going slightly well you know patinaed slightly rusty a bit, a bit, a bit, a bit of patina uh, on the metal uh, and also some dark as well some black um, wash some earth wash just to make it look a bit oily a bit grim um, and finally some blood just two bits of blood on well, well some blood on on one of each of the flails spikes so I wanted to, it to look like she just sort of flailed someone in the side of the head and there's a little bit of blood that would, uh, was drying on the blades of the flail and it was done it was finished and we went over to to our D, &D session and really within minutes we couldn't we couldn't keep it secret for long we handed the flail over to her and she loved it <sighs> I was so pleased and and uh I'm also, like I say, quite impressed <laughs> that over the course of a day, I managed to make something that had that that sense of, of, I don't know, of an artifact. It was a, it went from being some stuff to being a thing, and I was really, really pleased and proud of that. There was one, just one little caveat, and some of you who have experience with painting things may well have picked this up as as a potential problem, and that is that the. Um, uh, the finish, the, the spray paint finish on the chain in particular, wasn't staying on. So when she started flailing, actually, the, the chains were scratching on each other and the paint was coming off. So I, I offered to take the flail home with me, and it is currently um, uh, in the shed, so that I could wire wool the chains, actually scratch them up, tooth them up a little bit, spray them with a car primer, and then repaint it so the paint actually sticks to the chains but it'll look and it'll behave precisely as that original finished item. Uh, but I just, just figured I'd mention that because it, it did slightly disappoint me, but also I'm, uh, I'd much rather see see the job done properly. You know, so it was read, the concept was ready for Saturday and she loved it and she adored it and she, she, you know, she just about was happy to hand it back to me because she also really understood that that it deserves to be finished properly. So that's the one final thing I really have to do is just redo the paint on the chain. But you know, hey ho. Ultimately, it was a very successful one day build of a LARPing style flail. And I do indeed have the parts to make my own um, when, when I'm finished with hers. So again, I'm gonna have to redo the paint job on this chain. Um, I wonder if I can scratch off some, actually, that's not scratching off. <laughs> oh dear, it looks like, looks like these ones have been made slightly better. Um, uh, you know, not on purpose, uh, but unless you can see the, you know, the key features, the, the hot glue looking a little bit like welding. If, if I'd had time, I would have sanded off the, the textured part of the, um, of the, uh, the foam. 
and so it's, but, but but actually I don't mind that it kind of again it kind of adds to like a slightly sort of brutal feel to these things and I just love how they how they swing they are magnificent uh, and there you go hopefully that has been interesting to you if you're interested in making a flail or if you just like hearing how uh, how people go about making things or how I went about making this hopefully that's been interesting and uh, if you want to have a crack at making your own flail definitely share uh, if you can share like a video or a picture or something with me below I'd love to see anyway guys as ever until next time do take care bye bye